I'm Mike Hanawald, field agronomist with Beck Hybrids, and I'm out here in a field of 5507 here today in late September. A uh, decent looking field of corn, and I uh, wanted to show some things that I've been seeing out here in the cornfield and some questions I've gotten, um, answer some questions that I've gotten uh, over the past week or so about some of the things that are going on. The next thing that I want to look at um, when I'm evaluating the health of the stand is going to be um, the stalks. And the first stalks that I want to look at are the ones on plants that might have prematurely died or ghost plants as such. And so you walk down the canopy and uh, you find a plant like this one here, um, where you can see that this plant is brown and dead. The top is broken out of it um, compared to the plants nearby it that are, are green. So I call it like a ghost plant because it, it died died prematurely there. And, um, and when you see this, um, this could be um, caused by several factors. In this case, this particular plant, we can tell by the diameter of the stalk and what we're seeing here that it was most likely a later emerger. We all know that our corn stands struggled this spring and uh, we had some late emergers come up and so this was a little bit weaker, probably a little bit more susceptible to disease and maybe it was the northern corn leaf fly um, that might have killed this, this plant prematurely. Um, the other thing that we wanna look out for is something called crown rot. And so some hybrids might be susceptible to a crown rot infection if they are infected um, early in the season. So we're looking at corn basically from V2 to V7. So uh, corn that's shorter than knee high, if it experiences periods in the field uh, where that soil is saturated for long periods of time during that phase, and it's a hybrid that's a little bit more susceptible to it, we could get some crown rot. Now the way to tell for sure is to dig up one of these plants that is one of those ghost plants or premature death plants and split that stalk open. And now you can see that there's a lot of problems going on with this stalk. So we definitely, this black here is anthracnose stalk rot, and we definitely have some of that going on here. Uh, you can see it up here at this node as well. Um, but if we look down here at the crown, there's definitely some rot happening, but this rot most likely came in after the plant already died. If we had a severe crown rot infection here, you would definitely see more um, brown here at the crown. And so, um, that's something that we, we want to, um, I guess, identify at this point and understand, was it an early infection of crown rot that caused this problem or something else late that caused the problem? And in this case, I think it's something else most likely due to being a later emerging plant. Um, and so it was therefore more susceptible to the northern corn leaf blight and died, died prematurely. Now we compare that to a healthy stock here, um, a plant that still had plenty of green left in the canopy. And you can see here, that we have a very strong and sturdy stalk. In, in this case, uh, we like to see, um, you know, very dense, dense stalk, lots of material in here. It's not soft like the one that we were just looking at and we're not seeing that rot. So we can feel very confident in the standability of a stalk that looks like this when we're at, at the black layer stage at this point in the growing season. So as we evaluate the stalks, we obviously wanna know how well are they gonna, going to hold up? And so there's two tests we can do, the pinch test or the push test. And so we come back here to our premature death plant and crouch down and take a look here. And if we pinch this stalk down here, you can see that I can uh, pinch it pretty readily uh, like that. And if I push on it and push it over, it breaks off pretty readily. We compare that to this healthy plant right here and you can see that it is, is sturdy. I can't pinch it. And when I push it over, it springs back in place. So. Obviously, we don't want to see any stalks come over, but again, I had to hunt pretty hard to find this stalk that prematurely died. And so it's a very small percentage and it's mainly just late emergers. It's not going to be a big concern in this field, but if we are seeing a lot more higher percentage of those um, plants that might be dying prematurely or, or even just they've, the whole field has turned brown and, and we don't see any green left in the canopy and we come here and we pinch these stalks and we can pinch pretty easily, that's a field that we want to prioritize a little bit higher up on our list. Now, is it the disease that is causing this or what is the cause of some of the stock challenges that we might be seeing out in our field? And I think that comes to um, how is the corn progressing through its maturity and, and what's the, the health as it goes. As you can see, we've got a lot of green here in this case, but I think the other factor besides just the disease is um, <clears throat> uh, nitrogen deficiency. And so if, uh, if I take a look at this, this uh, leaf right here and you can see I, it, this leaf is obviously mostly mostly brown in this case, but we've got some green left here and we go straight from green to brown. We're not really seeing a yellowing period. And you can see this even just driving down the road. A lot of cornfields uh, this year, unfortunately, they went 
through the green phase of green and, and fairly healthy. And then they kind of went through a yellowing phase before they turned brown. And when you have an extended yellowing phase there, um, that's when we're gonna be concerned about nitrogen deficiency because what that means is, is that that corn is moving nitrogen from the leaves and stalk, moving it up to the ear. A lot of us are looking at pretty decent corn yields this year. You can see we husked back five years in a row here. And um, while the ears aren't, aren't um, really huge, um, 5507 likes a higher population. It's more of a determinant ear. And to see this many ears at a 35,000 population that we have here in this size of ears, um, I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. And so we've got good yield potential here, but it takes a lot of extra nutrition to feed good yield potential. And even if we did a good job of making sure that we put on enough nitrogen for our corn, a lot of us were excessively wet in July and we might have lost some nitrogen in that during that period from that excessive rainfall and leaching of nitrogen or denitrification in the soil. And then some of us were excessively dry in August. And even if we had enough nitrogen in the soil, if you remember, nitrogen has to have water to move it into the roots and make it available to the plant. And if we don't have water, the plant can't access it. And so it begins to rob it from the, the stalks and uh, leaves and move it into the ear in that case, which then could leave us with weaker stalks. And so I um, wanted to kind of talk through uh, several of these things here and so that you know what to look for as you're going out and, and taking a look at your fields. Um, and just because we see a lot of disease on the plants doesn't necessarily mean that disease, even though it's a new one and we're seeing a lot of tar spot, tar spot may not be the cause of all the problems that we have out in our, our field. And so. I uh, want to encourage you to, to, to take a look at your fields. Uh, there's a lot of fields that are, are fairly healthy and in good shape like the one we're in here right now, but there's a lot of fields that um, out there that might be problematic and we might want to prioritize a little bit early harvest. And so those fields are going to be the ones that we've experienced some nitrogen deficiency. We saw severe northern corn leaf blight, gray leaf spot or tar spot, uh, those three diseases, and then fields that might have had that crown rot where we're seeing a higher percentage of those plants is premature death. And when we do that push or pinch test, we're seeing some of those stalks lean over. So uh, with that, I hope you found this information helpful as you prepare uh, and begin to move through the harvest season. But if you have any questions about this, feel free to reach out to myself or your local BEX representative, and we'd be happy to help. <music>